up friends it has been a minute since i've done anything that wasn't a comic dub i appreciate all the love that y'all are giving me on those my dogs in the background drinking water loud as fuck but <laughs> i just wanted to talk man i just wanted to yap a little bit about sparking zero it's been out a little bit over a week and i've been enjoying the hell out of the game i know most of y'all have too but there have been some complaints some valid some uh not so valid and i just wanted to you know give you, give you a little bit of, a little bit of encouragement and share my experience so i have played the entire tenkaichi series the rage and blast series pretty much if it had dragon ball on it i played it or owned it at some point and there is a lot to learn with um sparking zero and you have to give yourself time to learn that so like there are way more defensive mechanics in this game than there were in the older games like you had Sonic Sway in Tenkaichi, you had the vanishing, the vanish wars. That's like honestly my favorite part where like you attack somebody, they vanish, you vanish, and it just goes back and forth like that. And I I appreciate it. Like, cause this game is fast as hell. It's way faster than Budokai Tenkaichi 3 was. And with those options, of course, this being an arena brawler, a lot of them aren't really balanced nor do they really require perfect timing the only one that really requires like good timing is the uh, super guard which is i play on classic controls not standard so it's up and whatever your guard button is that's i think uh i'm, I'm on playstation so for me it's up and square as soon as an attack lands for standard i think it's up and r1 but other than that you can kind of just mash out every counter and that's been leading to a lot of people kind of struggling to get their offense started or you know complaining a lot that certain characters have better defense than others which you know every character has access to the same core mechanics and learning those core mechanics through either the tutorial or you know clicking on battle explanation when you're in the tutorial will explain how a lot of that stuff works um a big portion of it though will be hands-on experience and I know I know that's uh that's not a lot of people's strong suit but unfortunately that's just the that's just the nature of the beast but every I'm telling you right now as an as an old Dragon Ball game player in this game everything has a counter even counters I may do some form of like a breakdown in the future but I mean there's already a shit ton of channels that are doing that like the the arena brawler channels the Dragon Ball channels like if you have a question somebody's made a video with an answer so before you complain go check those out look it up on youtube somebody has explained it as well or better than the game has the other thing is there's been some complaints about the character balance i mean hell the dev team knew what they were doing when they when they announced the game they said yeah we're not really going for balance because for one it's a dragon ball game there's 180 odd characters in this game Two, it's an arena brawler. There, there never really has been a truly balanced arena brawler. And this is just kind of, it's consistency. They're keeping in line with the Tenkaichi series because in this game, much like Tenkaichi 2, Tenkaichi 3, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is probably the best character in the game. If not, like, in a tier of his own. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just they, he has access to so much shit. But then you have other characters like um, Yajirobe that can heal themselves. I think Mr. Satan, um, Hercule. I've, I'm seeing Mr. Satan anytime somebody talks about him in this game. It's, it's Hercule. Hercule Satan. He has a loop with his uh, present for you super because it knocks you down and it, call, it basically causes what's called a hard knockdown, which is a knockdown that you can't recover from in time. And he can basically just loop that as long as he has the meter to do it. Like there, there's so much cheese in this game and that's to be expected because again it's it's arena brawler it was present in the old games <laughs> that's just just how it goes like we knew we knew what we were getting into for the most part <laughs> when we bought a game called sparking zero and they told us the character count it it was never going to be fully balanced and i for one am okay with that for the most part um the only the only real issue i have and i'm going to talk about it a little bit later but the only real issue I have is like how some of the meter management works in the game, right? That's that's one of my biggest complaints. And it's it's okay to have these complaints, but like before you complain, 
please at least understand what you're complaining about. And if it doesn't fit you, just move on, man. Like just move on, either play around it or stop playing. Those are really like the two options. Um, about the meter, about the meter management. Sparking mode is basically what, um, damn, I forgot the technical name for it, but like, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it sparking mode anyway. It's it's essentially the same as it was in here here as it was in Tenkaichi three, except for in Tenkaichi three, I think the sparking meter went down faster. I feel like it lasts it lasts long enough for you to essentially mash square until you damn near kill your opponent. And in Tenkaichi three, I don't think I don't remember that being the case. Like you know you could mash, but like. There was a certain time where you were like, all right, cool, I gotta stun him so I can do a super. In this one, it's like you could, you could literally mash, knock them down, and if you keep mashing square, your basic attack, it will OTG them indefinitely. That is that is new to this game. In Tenkaichi 3, if you were in sparking mode and you just mashed your basic attack, as long as they were standing, you could combo them. But like if they hit a wall or if you did something that like swept them while you were doing it and mashed again they would fall out of it in this one i think once you get up to like 30 hits they'll fall on the ground but because you're still attacking your attacks will basically just otg them indefinitely until your sparking meter runs out like it's absolutely insane that um and when you're in sparking mode the key blast like your special key blast like when you sidestep and push triangle um those you can do those indefinitely and with a character like Vegeta and Gohan who have like multiple projectiles in their sidestep key blast like it it's a pain to deal with for real but you can deflect them you know you can use perception every like I said everything has a counter but I would like to see you know the key blast if you're using key blast take down make the sparking meter go down quicker like I think that's fair because like in sparking mode you can combo supers into ultimates and that's that's about on par, honestly. But the key blasts don't take any key in sparking mode. Like that is that is insane to me. And the the coup de gras of my complaints about sparking mode, why the crispy crunchy fuck are ultimates unblockable? Like, why why are they unblockable? fucking block like you can like if somebody's in sparking mode and they do an ultimate you you literally just can't do shit you have to teleport out of the way in time if it's like a beam one or uh or a blast like i know vegeta has final impact final impact final atonement depending on which version you pick but if it's a beam and y'all are like point blank to each other 9.9 .9 times out of 10 you're never gonna get that vanish off in time like i think i think it happens here with me and Gohan because I'm like you you see me go up in the air but the hitbox is so big that it catches me and I'm blocking because I was like okay cool let me jump over that and block just in case and I go up and I block and I still get hit not only that but like it causes a hard knockdown which you know it's an ultimate you spend the meter that's fair you should get some benefit but it takes away your lock on like not only is it an attack that's damn near instant because of the super freeze and stops the game whenever one's activated, but once you get hit by it and recover, you have to find your opponent again. And the lock on system in this one is a little bit different. In Tenkaichi 3, you hit the button and if they were visible on screen, then you'd lock onto them. In this one, it's a manual search. So you have to rotate your camera and stay on them for I think it's like 1.5 it might be a whole two seconds but you have to stay on them for 1.5 to two seconds before the game's like okay cool you're locked on again and that's that's just too much to me like <laughs> that is just way too much to me like if it's gonna be unblockable I don't think you should get all the fucking debuffs that it comes with like you can't you can't use perception on ultimates you can't use um, super super guard on on rush style ultimates. It's it's just absolutely insane. Like I I, I really think we need to relook at how how ultimates work in this game. Um, another another minor thing um, that again has a counter, but it's the uh, it's the vanish wars. So like when you and your opponent just start vanishing each other, 
it basically boils down to who has the most meter to maintain the vanishing. And I think a way to kind of counteract that is I don't want it, I don't want it to change. I don't want that portion to change because it is a technique that takes meter. But I think after like the fourth or fifth vanish, it should speed up like the animation. So like you get consistent timing for like the first four or five. Then after that, you kind of have to react quicker to each one. And that's kind of a way to keep it balanced because the way it is now, it's just, hey, I had three meters. My opponent had two. If I don't fuck up, I'm going to win. And there's no real there's no real stakes behind it, I don't think, at its current point, which is, you know, that's there's nothing wrong with it. I just I would like that to be a thing. You know, I, I appreciate a little bit of challenge, a little bit of difficulty for my reward. So I don't I don't mind it the way it is. But that that is about where where i landed uh i'm having fun with the game there are there are a lot of things that the online impacts like you know your sidesteps and your vanishes so you kind of have to play around that depending on your opponent's connection oh yeah also the other thing it's a glitch they've addressed it but like if your if your opponent gets deemed as player one you have to play as whatever their control scheme is I, I play on classic. I have not even tried standard controls. I have no clue what anything does. So I end up either like spamming the same super or just going into sparking and trying to hit an ult. Like that's that's really what it boils down to in that. But they said they're gonna address it. So we'll, we'll just give them time to address it. And yeah, I think that's about where we're at. Like I don't expect any real balance patches like we got with fighters because this isn't that type of game. Um, I do expect the scene to evolve. I've already seen like some of the higher level players, you know, doing high level player shit. And then everybody else complaining about that. It's like, oh, this looks so boring. And I'm just like, dog, do y'all just want like flashy lights? Is that all it is? Like <laughs> it's a, this game, this game is a Dragon Ball fight simulator and it does that incredibly well. And I think we can have both, honestly. Like, you know, any any game where there's competition, a competitive seed is going to emerge in some capacity. So that's just that that's just what it is. Um again, I'm enjoying the hell out of the game. Like I've been streaming it the past few days. Probably stream it today with some homies. But let me know, man. Let me know. Y'all having fun? Y'all, what do you like? What do you dislike about the game? Has it been a fun experience? If you're a Tenkaichi 3 veteran, has it lived up to your standards? If you're new to the Tenkaichi series, is it a fun game? You're going to stick with it? Who y'all playing? That's the biggest thing. Who y'all playing? Are y'all playing who y'all like or who you have to? Because like the amount of like Gogeta 4s and MUI Gokus that I've seen is just insane. It is absolutely but donkers and I don't understand like play who you like man but I will see y'all in the next video appreciate y'all staying locked in man we moving we are moving peace